Welcome to Cottage Talk. I am Russ Goldman. Joining me right now is three very special guests. I have Owen Smith, who is from two different places, from Friends of Fulham and from a great podcast known as The Fofcast. I have my friend Claire Parrish, who's joining me as well. And then we have ex Fulham player, Fulham legend, Rob Wilson. We're all here to talk about some very interesting topics to really help each other out. This is, show is about Fulham and mental health. That's what this show is really about. And I'm just going to start off by saying that none of us are mental health professionals. We're just going to have a conversation, try to learn from each other our, of our own experiences, being Fulham supporters, being on social media, and uh, how it affects us and how we can learn from each other and and hopefully you know get something out of it. And, and we hope everyone that's watching live and listening gets something out of it too. Okay, so b- before we go on any further, I just want to welcome everyone to the show first. Owen, thank you so much. This is your debut episode. Thank you so much for joining me, Claire, and Rob tonight. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you all. Okay, and I, I do want to mention that uh, we were supposed to be joined by Scott Tanfield, also of the Fofcast, and unfortunately Scott's a little under the weather, so he couldn't join us. So, Scott, if you're watching, listening, we're thinking of you, and I hope you feel better. Okay. Claire, how are you doing? This is your idea, my friend. You came to me and said, listen, let's do a show about this. I said, you're right. Let's do a show about this. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks, Russ. I don't want to take credit for this, actually. I think it was just us just having a chit chat, wasn't it? We were having a good old chat and we both realized that we have quite a lot of things going on in our heads. So I think this kind of happened almost organically, didn't it? I think it was... It it was just kind of happened, didn't it? And um, you know, we've all got stuff going on in our heads, and it just seemed to to flow from a, a conversation between two friends, really, didn't it? Right, exactly. Well, thank you for mentioning that because because you and I talk, have talked a lot. We've been brainstorming about doing a show like this and, and what it could be, and uh, we obviously hope that this is a positive show that that we all can learn something from each other. Rob, thank you so much for joining us as well. Really appreciate it. Yeah, good evening, uh, all, all three of you. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's uh, it's quite a current topic at the moment, you know, globally, um, both in 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 football and, and probably in life, really, mental yeah. health in the current pandemic we've been in. So, you know, it, it won't just be us supporters and football followers that will be fol- uh, will have this type of um, disease, really, because that's, yes. that's what it will be. It will be. So it'd be good to get uh, each other's experiences and obviously the watching guests and comments that will come on board throughout the evening will be, you know, we, we as you say, the bottom line is we're, we're, we're not experts. We're, no. It's good to talk and, and, and stuff like this just, you know, just gets gets your mind thinking. And, you know, there's plenty of uh, ex-players out there. If, follow, if you follow people like Mark Crossley and, and Dean Widnas and people like that and Kirkland and every day there, you know, they're constantly on um, social media, which we'll talk about in the second half yes. of the show, that are um, hammering the message home at, uh, about mental health, you know. So it's, it's going to be an exciting show. I hope so, Rob. And uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that. And I mentioned this to you guys before we started, that um, I recently watched uh, the uh, BBC show that had Prince William and uh, Gareth Southgate, Thierry Henry, some fans, and uh, some Danny Rose, uh, Peter Crouch. It was it was really interesting to hear how they've been affected. Danny Rose's story was was very powerful. How his mental health has affected him over the years. And and again, it, I think what was great about watching it was just it was there. I could tell it was therapeutic for them, but it was also therapeutic for me to hear their stories. And that's what I'm hoping we can get out of just talking about our experiences. And uh, how we're affected by different things in life, and one of one of these things is foam. And uh, we're all foam supporters, and uh, just wanted just to talk about it. How our mental health can be affected by several things, like I said, results. It can be affected by social media. We're going to talk about it today, and hopefully, uh, we'll get a lot out of it, and everyone watching will as well. All right, Claire, I'm going to start with you. The first part of the show is really going to be about foam, and when we are. Dealing with results, positively and negatively. I can tell you, not just as a fan of Fulham, but also a fan of the Patriots, I've been very affected by results. And when it's a loss, it's hard for me to deal with, especially if I'm having a bad week, if I'm under stress. You and I talked about that. 
when there's a victory, I am over the moon. I'm watching everything. I am doing everything that I can to get as much information on Fulham, on the Patriots when they win, and I, and I cannot stop. I watch full matches maybe two or three times in a row. I literally will continue to watch it. I can't stop. And uh, that's a very interesting feeling that I have. You know, and again, my mood changes when they win and when they get a draw and when they lose. And it's just, I, I thought that would be an interesting topic for us to really dive into. So I want to start with you because you told me about how you feel after, say, a loss. So let's start there. Yeah, so um would say that I'm quite a highly strung person in general anyway. I'm very excitable. Everything excites me. I'm, I'm like that anyway. So when I start on the positive, when we win, I am buzzing, absolutely buzzing. I'm a hundred times faster, louder, more annoying, overexcited. I'm buzzing. It lifts my mood. Like if I'd had, you know, eight tequila shots or something. It really does. It is, you know, it is, it, it's a cliche. People say it's like a drug and it is yeah. because you're buzzing, you know, that excitement, that exhilaration. And I was thinking about this earlier and I was thinking that um, not so much now because I'm a parent, but back when I used to go out, you know, five times a week, after a win, after a full and win on a night out, Honestly, I was like a crazy person. It, they were always the best nights out because I was just crazy, buzzing, wild. Everything was so much more fun. When Fulham lose, and again, I'll go back to the good old days when I used to go out five nights a week. I'd actually cancel nights out. You know, I'd say I'm not going out. I'm in a bad mood. We lost three nil. We were rubbish. And, you know, it really did affect me. How it affects me now is slightly different in that I am a busy person. I'm, you know, I work full time. I'm a single parent. So that naturally makes me quite a busy person. Um, So I'm quite, like I say, I am quite a highly strung person anyway. I'm also somebody that needs to take on 300 things at once. So I'm always quite stressed. My stress levels are always generally high, but that's my choice. That's how, kind of how I like to live my life. But when Fulham lose, I I do feel deflated, especially in the nature that some of the games, yep. you know, particularly the Leicester one, let's say, um, where, you know, I, I used the word boring several times about that. Yes, you did. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was just in... You didn't hold back on that one, by the way. <laughs> I was in a terrible mood after that yeah. game. And I felt very demotivated just in general about my life. And I know people probably listening to this are saying, you know, this woman is bonkers. What's she talking about? But honestly, I feel when I see Fulham, the team I love so much, lose in the way that they sometimes do or draw in the way that we sometimes do, I feel demotivated and I feel deflated. And that in turn makes me not act like myself because I think, oh, screw the ironing. I'll do it tomorrow, you know, because my life is that exciting. Um, You know, I, you know, there's there's things I just think, oh, sod it. I don't want to do that now because I just feel like basically it really does affect me. It really does. And I get angry as well. I can get very angry at things like if I drop something on the floor and I'm like, and all of this. And it's like, it's related. But we've all done it, Claire. That's why we're talking about we've all done this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. (laughs) But that's how much, you know, and again, listen, we are supporters, you know. We could say fans, fan is short for fanatic. And Mm. that's, you know, and again, I ask myself, do I take it too far? Do I get affected too much? If I'm having a bad week, as you and I talked about, does a full loss really do a number on me? And I I will say, yes, it does. Mm. But then a victory will do exactly Mm. the opposite. It does feel like a drug, like it it does lift me. But I'll also Mm. say this, and and then, Owen, I'm going to go to you, because it almost feels like a stress relief when they win. Like, it's this, you know, weight off of my shoulders when they win. 
I didn't play. I didn't do anything. I, I, I'm not, I didn't actually win the match, but it almost, because I care so much, it feels like this weight has been taken off my shoulders when they've won because I feel this pressure. I'm not, I'm, I'm not playing. I'm just a supporter like everyone else. But um, I guess that's how much I'm affected by it, positively and negatively. It's, it's not just negatively. It's positively as well. I've actually thought about it. Why do I take it to the extreme? Why am I replaying the full matches when my family thinks I'm crazy? What, why am I doing it again? You're watching the full victory again. Why are you doing this? So that's what's interesting about this, that maybe you know I can look at myself and say that maybe I need to dial it down because even my mental health being too high, that I need to dial it down to be more, you know, normal when they win, lose, or draw, to be more even keel, because I'm really affected by results, I, I have to admit it. Okay, Owen, over to you. And I want to get your view and, and how you handle wins, laws, and losses, and uh, draws. How, how do you deal with it, my friend? Well, I'd like to say that I've got a cat like Claire's, but it's uh, it's having far too much fun behind it. <laughs> um, so I think I think really um, wins. Um, I'm I'm beginning to forget what they're like. Um, I think <laughs> I really dig. I think the, I am I, too. I can sort of say that uh, you know once upon a time, uh, win, wins are great. Let, let, let's be honest, we we are fans for wins. Yes. Um, uh, but but sadly, I think we pick teams that that are now in for periods of sustained. Uh, Lack of success. Um, this this year, particularly for me, has been one that's that's just uh, tinged with disappointment. As a as a as a Welsh rugby fan, Packers fan, Ferrari fan, and a Fulham fan, it's just a wow. uh, it's it's a grand slam of disappointment. Um, and so so what I can say is when when it's uh, when when Fulham lose, particularly, I think Claire hit on a really good point. If we lose and we gave a really good account of ourselves, and I'll sort of say the Chelsea game uh, and the Manchester United game, um, it, it, it doesn't actually affect me that badly. Um, I can sort of look at the positives and say, actually, we're we're punching above our weights. We're giving a really good account of ourselves. And, 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 and you can see that uh, what's happening on the pitch um, has translated to, to meaning as much, or at least appearing to mean as much to players as it does to us. I think, I think what really gets me down is, is sort of, when we lose and it sort of feels uh, a bit like, like, like showing up for an exam without revising, you, you know, what could have been, yes. uh, you know, there could have been a much better outcome, whether it be down to the, the players pick the tactical selection, the recruitment, we're not here to talk about any of that sort of thing. But I think sometimes you just want to pick up Fulham and just give it a good shake and almost scream at it and say, do something. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I think we, I those, those are the ones that really get you down. Um, and, and nowadays, I think uh, it's, it's a bit. Uh, so, for, so, for, so for anyone who's sort of sitting with us, we're very much locked down. Um, so I'm, I'm living at home and sort of don't really see anyone. Uh, live on my own. Um, your, your day is sort of broken up between between work, the odd bit of exercise, um, far too much eating. Um, uh, and a bit of sport, and and when when you sort of uh, I guess build up to something, um, I'll, I'll cite the example of the Leicester game at six p.m. It's sort of clear the schedule with work, yeah. Um, cancel those meetings with people in the U.S. on on the West Coast, and and, and take the evening. You, you sort of you sort of think right, I, I've I've got my bit done. Come on, Fulham, it's over to you. And then sometimes it's it's just soul destroying to think, ah, I've been I've been looking forward to this for, for some some time and uh, yeah. I actually have done myself more harm um, <laughs> watching it and, and and I think all of the things that Claire said about sort of wanting to sort of throw your arms around and, and um, God forbid kick the cat and 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 uh, do more eating um, I think I think all come come up quite regularly Owen is it really does it come down to when you've built this up and I've done the same exact thing when you see an opportunity and I'll even throw in those Brighton matches because I think they're right there with that (laughs) Leicester city match, you've built it up that here are some opportunities and you have this disappointment and you see the flaws, you see what could have done been done. Mm -hmm. I think that's what adds to it is you could, you play the what if game. Oh, and is that a 
Is that a way to look at it? You play well. What if they did this? Yeah, I, I think I think we'll sort of we'll sort of caveat it with with your your heavy censorship at the start. We, we, whilst we're, we're not mental health experts, but we're all experts in picking football teams. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I think you know the we're not privy to the ins and outs of, of how yeah. our club or any sports have a run um, in the main. But it's sort of you sort of feel like you want to at least give it the best chance of success. And I think um, we all like to try and put things in perspective. And I think we, we're acutely aware that as this season goes on, we, we need to actually win games. And I guess sometimes it, it really infuriates uh, when, and, and, and we know the message isn't to go out there and not win games, but at right. times it feels like we're not trying to win games. And I think, I think it sort of comes down to a case of saying, you know, this is there is very in this particular environment we're in, where we're we're all in a very strange part of our lives. I, I think you know it, it is a it is something that uh, is there to you know at least what has been kept kept going for the good of people's mental health. Really, um, it's it, it's 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 there as a distraction. It's there as a bit of escapism. It's there yes. as a sort of escape from reality. Um, at times, I wonder whether Fulham should be continuing because it doesn't appear to be doing too much good for, for our health, but it's great for other fans of other clubs. Right, and that's interesting that you put that. It's an escape, Owen. I can say that about Fulham. I can also say that about other clubs, other teams, other sports. You're a fan of the Packers. I'm sure you went through a ride. Unfortunately, it didn't end the way that you wanted it to, and I actually wanted the Packers to win, by the way. I'm just going to share that with you. But it didn't end the way that you wanted to, but it is an escape. So when you're going through this escape from what you're dealing with life and it doesn't go your way, I think that adds to the stress that you're dealing with. Would you agree with me? I think so. I think so. I think it it, it, it sort of – you you probably build in your mind a baseline expectation of where you think you should be. And if you outperform that baseline expectation, I think you're probably comfortable with it regardless of the result. I think when it underperforms your baseline That's expectation where, – yeah it really affects you. And I think really maybe we went in with too high a base on expectation for this year. Um, the shortest preseason turnaround that's probably has ever been, um, you know, unprecedented financial pressures and, and a need to fully rebuild the squad. Maybe we should have just been happy with the sort of finishing 20th and, and not winning any games. Well, well I, I don't know if I can go there to be honest with you. I, I understand what you're saying. I understand based on everything that that's going on, but I think that we all want better. Listen, you made a very strong argument of all of the issues Fulham were dealing with. And maybe we should be looking at those more carefully and and being able to understand the issues that they – and I've said this too, Owen. When we look at Fulham, like you said, the shortest turnaround, financial issues, building a brand-new squad and how difficult that would be. But you know what? We're still fans. We want more. We want them to survive. So I think that's also part of it, even though we all, we know all this. And you're right about that. And I know all this, and I say it on this show. I still believe that they can do better than than 18th. And uh, I think that's what drives me. Even though you make an argument, maybe we should be happy with 20th. I, I understand that. Oh, no, 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 I'm not happy with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it that You know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know that, that our expectations should have been a little bit different, but – we're we're supporters. We want the best for our club, and I think we'll all we all would agree was survival would be what, what's best, not being mid table. Survival, and I think that's where the disappointment happens. And you know, and like I said, we're talking about mental health, and when they lose the stress level, of we're having stress in our lives. I, I think it might add to that. It's like what Clara said to me, Rob. I want to go over to you, and and uh, feel free to share your thoughts on what all three of us are sharing, and then then we'll talk a little bit about your experiences as a player, but I, I want to get your thoughts on moods and how mood, how your mood might be affected by a full loss or draw. I'm curious your view on that. Yeah. Well, listening to your three views is, is very similar to mine. And I think my wife will uh, echo them, uh, <laughs> them, them when I'm watching a game and I'm, she's more nine times out of 10, she'll be watching a game with me, obviously in the current situation. Um, and yeah, my mood changes in that ninety minutes, unbelievably up and yeah. down. And like you say, I, I I very much like yourselves get excited to the build up of a game, and I get myself like you say, if I've had a stressful work a week at work, 
Uh, I'm in a sales environment job and, you know, it, it changes day to day. I can have a really good day and then I can have a, a really bad day. Um, you know, we work in all the hours God sends, not just the employed hours we're meant to work. Um, and, yeah, and, and football is a release when it's – whether it's a Monday night or a Sunday night or or a Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock, which there isn't many of them. And, you know, we all look forward to Fulham and, you know, as the, as the slogans always said, you know, Fulhamish, you know, we've yeah. through the last three or four years we've had the highs and the lows. The highs have been fantastic and when we're, we're – I'm no different than any of you. When it's high, I'll be like Claire. I'm on, I'm on cloud nine and want to go to the pub and – mix with fans, talk, have a beer and go through the game. And and when I lose, I just sink into a sunken sort of, especially obviously on my own. And, you know, I go to a lot of games with my son and, you know, we have during the game, we'll be WhatsApping each other, you know, and, and, I, and I'll be, I'll be WhatsApping, you know, Ian Kearney, Tom Kearney's dad, you know, he's obviously not at the games at the moment. And, you know, we'll have we'll have some correspondence during the game how we feel it's going, and then it's we you know it's up and down, and and it, and the mental health side of that does affect you, and you know it's it's amazing, and football is we're glad that it's back and has been for the last sort of ten months. God God knows what it would have been like if we didn't have elite sport. You know, we were all right. probably would have been climbing the walls somewhere along the line. Unfortunately. As we've seen over the last sort of twelve months, the amount of um, unfortunate suicides and mental health people have, you know, and I, I, I really feel for those that live in flats on their own and they've got can't get out, and um, you know, just especially in London, you know, with the current situation down there. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm no different than you three. I have the highs and the lows. When they're high, it's very high, um, and when they're low, it, it you know, I just, I just. I don't know. I just go inwards and I, I just go to myself. I mean, we'll talk about it later. I don't actually go on social media during the game. You know, okay. I'll stay away from that for that 90 minutes. I'll have a bit of banter with my son and, and obviously, uh, obviously Ian, but um, social media side of it, I'll stay away until, and then to be fair, uh, and we'll talk about it in the second part, even after that. Recently, if I were honest, you know, I, I tried to stay away from it because it, there's too much negativity from Fulham fans out there. Um, and you know, not not uh, personal to, right. to any individual players, just in general. Obviously, Scott is, is going to be the brunt of it for the most of the most of it, but I'm sure we'll discuss that in the second part. As a player, yeah, obviously it was different in my days, and you know, the the, the mental side of it probably wasn't even it. You know, that word wouldn't have been around in, in going back 30, 40 years ago because yeah. you know you just you played you. <laughs> that was it. It was just a job you played, and, and uh, there was pressure. Obviously, there were pressure, and you would hear the banter from the from the touchlines. Obviously, the only downside of it, the lads at the moment can't hear any of the supporters because some of them performances that we have put in this season, if if they were if there were supporters there, they'd be they'd be getting um, they'd be getting a ten pennies worth from the from from the uh, the enclosure or the Riverside or Putney or the Hammersmith end, rightly so. Um, because we've all we've all witnessed the highs and the lows of performance levels as well. You know, I put West Brom in there the other week. That 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 just ruined my Saturday when oh. you know we could have been three or four up at half time and then just to peter out second half. And it's happened too often. Um and there's been some you know, there's been some games where we're you know, we've 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 had a chance to go and win the game and unfortunately we haven't and, and that affects your that affects your day and affects it sometimes it affects me for a couple of days, you know. The That's big a great games. point, Rob. That's yeah, actually and it's real, not just really it's not point. just it's not just a few hours after the game, you know. You're like you say, I'm not one for I don't go as overboard as probably you, Russ, because you're in the media, but you'll re re review the games a couple of times. Yeah. The big games, obviously. Um the the playoff finals when they come up, you know, you often sit down and watch that and and think, Oh yeah, what a great day that was and everything about it. But Really, we should probably watch the bad games as well, probably just as much to yeah. to really appreciate it, you know? Right, exactly. And, Rob, you brought up a good point. So I want to go back to you, Owen. How long are you affected after a result? Like Rob said, it, it can linger, especially a loss. How long does it affect you, Owen, when you really still feel it? I suppose now in the situation where we're all at home, it, it's probably, I saw, saw, saw a really good tweet actually, which put it in context the other day. It was from someone else who's quite active and it sort of said, you know, 
in the past, you could sort of go to the pub and drink with friends and, and you forget about it or you go for a run or you could, you know, go to the cinema and, and, you know, game's over, you can go home, it's done with. Now you're sort of stuck with the results. So I guess it really can stick with me for the rest of the day. And yeah. normally I, I try to be quite, I'm, I'm quite a positive person, I think, in the main, um, as grouchy as my tweets can be. Um, and sort of, uh, you know, the day the day after I sort of wake up and say, right, that's done. Um, it, it is what it is. If it's something that was pivotal, I mean, the last time I think a game. Oh, and you just gave me a Belichick, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Really pivotal that I really got like down, down with was probably the West Brom away game last season, oh. uh, where where it was just sort of like, guys, we've really blown it here. Uh, I think that lasted a day or two, but uh, okay. In the main, try try and get over it. I mean, at the end of the day, as, as you said at the start, we're not on the pitch. Um, we're invested emotionally, but at the end of the day, what division Fulham are in and, and how, how we lose should, shouldn't really affect life in the long run. It does because we, 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 we're irrational people. We, all fans are irrational people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, normally a day. Um, it'll ruin the evening, as I think Rob said. Well, oh, once yeah. we get the game, or it's just yeah, that evening's done. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I'll just share this. My wife and my kids can attest to when Fulham lose, um, and they know that it's not going to be a good night for me. They, they know because it affects me. And it, you know, they know the next day when they see me replaying the match, they're like, "Why are you watching a loss again?" And because that's what I do, because I want to try to see what they did wrong to see how they can fix it. So I, you know, I start to get obsessed with, okay, they, they did this wrong, they did this wrong. This is what they need to do. And uh, and I really get into it. I, I actually take these losses. I, I look more closely at the losses, Owen, than I do the few victories we've had and the draws and and the matches that they come close. I look at the Brighton matches and, like you said, the Leicester City matches. Like, man, what did they do wrong? Because I'm fascinated with how it went wrong. And uh, so so then I, I, I take it to a different level where I try to f- figure out on my own, like, how do they fix it? And, uh, you know, that's when my fandom, I think, goes off the rails a little bit. And my mental health, because I I start to get, like, trying to figure out, well, what did they do wrong? And I think we all know what they did wrong. But, I, you know, again, I have a hard time letting that go. And, Clara, how how long does it linger for you? It generally, it really does depend on what's going on in my life outside of football. So if I've, I if I'm having like a really stressful week at work, yep. it can affect me for a good few days after. If my stress levels in life in general are generally low, I yep. can generally brush it off by a few hours the next morning. But I know I said to you, Russ, the other day in in, in our conversation when we were chatting on the phone, you know, um, uh, before Christmas we were delivering a virtual conference and we'd never done it before and it all fell on my shoulders and I'd never done it before and I was so stressed I was working 22 hour days I was so stressed I wasn't eating I wasn't sleeping it was ridiculous I was at breaking point and at that point a Fulham loss oh my goodness me it was honestly it it broke me then then so it really does depend for me what stress levels are like in my general life I would say you know when I'm when I'm just you know coasting and everything is is tickety boo god willing it's fine you know a a few hours later I'm fine I have some chocolate and goof about and I'm fine um but yeah you know if it's been a bad week it's yeah it can be a few days (laughs) okay not a problem all right Rob, I want to go back to you before we transition to the second half of the show. I want to ask you a question. This is something that um, I, I find interesting. How do you, as a player, how did you deal with the banter from the terraces? Um, quite well, personally. I mean, I, I'm sure I got plenty of pelters. And, you know, when you're playing and you're in the zone, you know, even with back in the bad old days where there might have only been four or 5,000 watching as opposed to, you know, when I play uh, uh, some stadiums where where I've played in front of forty thousand, depending on what club I'd played for. But yeah, I mean, y- you do hear it, uh, and I think in this day and age, 
there's certain players will probably thrive on it and there's certain players will probably go into their shell a bit. Obviously, yeah. this season with the current climate, it, 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 there's nothing. And and, and it, it, it it reminds me of playing in the comp, in the reserves, going back to my sort of when I was 17, 18, before I made my first team debut. You used to play at Craven Cottage, empty stadiums. There'll be, you know, one man and his dog and, and that would be it. And that's what uh, I know from talking to to current players, that that's what it was like them first few games when it for, from football first came back. They found it very difficult to, yeah. to, to do the transition of turning up. Uh, it's a lot more stringent now but than, than the first few games they played when it was going back to just empty stadiums. And, you know, I, I know the, the lads trained there a few times during the week before a build-up of a game just to get the mindset of this is what it's going to be like when we do go real next Saturday or whatever, you know. So... Um, it's slightly different from now. I mean, obviously, the, the, the very short period that, that they did have a few fan, fans back there, it was only limited amount. I'm sure they heard certain moans and groans, even with 2,000 people there, you know. Um, but from a professional point of view, I'm sure, you know, uh, if they're on top of their game, they don't hear anything, you know, because they're that, they're that set-minded. They're in the zone. Um, yeah, and certain players will... will Will rise to criticism or, or banter, and certain yep. players will just collapse, and it all completely ruin their game. And they very they'll go hiding; they won't want the ball. They'll just get out of the way. They'll, you know, and and from a manager's point of view and a coach's point of view, that's that would be noticeable from the sideline. So it, it's it, it's a very difficult question to answer in the current climate. But yep. uh, you know, I mean, it's it's. Um, it's an issue to some players, but other yep. players thrive on it. So, you know, I, I can't name our players, which are, you know, looking at some of our performances this year, there'd be more that, um, you know, don't thrive on it. Some like the, the, the idea of, of, of the crowd giving them or booing them or, 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 or knowing that they're getting some stick. Because when we, when we generally play at home, that away end, if yep. it has its full allocation, you know, there's some intimidating supporters that have, sure. have come to Fulham over the years, you know, so, um, but as as an ex player in my day, it, it wasn't too um, too bad. Although, you know, obviously I, I played at Luton and I played at Millwall for a year. That was that that was that was um, the least experience I enjoyed in my career playing at Millwall. Even though they were on my side, that it was um, it was probably the worst year of my life. Wow, wow. Well, I'm going to give you guys an example of a player that I think thrived under that kind of pressure. Bobby Zamora. Bobby Zamora, I think, took that type of banter and used it as fuel, Rob. Would that be an example yeah. of a player that, you know, and again, I don't like the way that he acted towards the supporters, but I think he used it as fuel for whatever way to motivate him to uh, to to uh, to really thrive in that second season with full. Yeah, yeah, probably did. I mean, I can, can vaguely remember Bobby... Uh, Obviously, watching him in in the successful side that we had, um, I know he got a bit of again going back to social media, and you know he was yeah, obviously a that. guest. He was a guest in the studio, and he was supporting West Ham more than Fulham, and I think that upset a few Fulham fans over over the weekend. You know, it's his prerogative to whichever team he's going to swing to if he's in a studio. But yeah, it was um, he's represented us. He's represented them. Um, but yeah, it's it's such a uh, such a grey area in terms of you know, uh, I think it's been very difficult for the last sort of ten months for players to suddenly go from playing in front of full houses every week, and the build up to that, uh, and the elation and the deflation that you can get in that ninety minutes, to currently playing in empty stadiums up and down the country, especially Premiership stadiums because yeah. some of them, you know, are quite daunting. You know, you go to the new Tottenham one or Man City, yeah. you know. Uh, Arsenal, Man United, you know, I mean, you know, before that we could have been playing in the championship, it could have been Burton or it could have been, you know what I mean? So they've got to go from psyching themselves up to looking at a stadium or looking around four sides of the ground that there's no one there, you know, and especially with what's been going on with our stand, it's slowly getting better now, but, you know, that open end on open side. Again, I, I, I know it was a difficult thing because if you look up as a player, and you're trying to switch play and all you can see is that stand that's empty. It, it sometimes puts you out in terms of your vision and your, your yardage and stuff like that. And I know that was a factor. Okay. Very good stuff. All right. Coming up next, we're going to talk about 
the social media part of our experience following foam and how it can affect or could affect our mental health. Okay, guys, let's move on. In the second half of the show, we're going to focus on social media and how it can affect us, our mental health. So, Owen, I'm going to start with you, and I'm going to ask you this question, and I want to ask all of this, all of us this question, and I'll answer it myself. Here's the question. Why do we go on social media during a match? I'll, I'll get us going, and then I'll go to you. I will say that I go on social media because I want to see if people are thinking the way I'm thinking if people have different opinions than me, and I'm curious about it. So that's why I go on. I might not tweet, but I want to see what others are thinking about the match. Why do you go on social media during a match? It depends where I'm at. If I'm at home, um, I actually turn it off during the match because it usually gives me the score before it's, uh, before it's actually happened. <laughs> when that's screaming. a good point. That's um, a good point. <laughs> but um, I, I think really, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not, not at the game and, and you're not local, so I initially joined Twitter for, for the reason I was living in, in Wales and it was it was a good way to connect with Fulham fans and also sort of keep abreast with things in real time, much better than forums. Yeah. Um, Fulham games weren't always on the TV, but I think as it's sort of grown um, and sort of sort of the, the, the way that social media has grown, I think, I think it's actually, it's a way to, as you say, give, give some, uh, almost play devil's advocate to some of your own thoughts. Um, yeah. You know, I've, I've had games where I've been watching in a stadium and thought, oh, this player's doing quite well. For example, the Liverpool this game, Liverpool game this season, I actually thought Loftus-Cheek had, had, a, had a really good first half. And right. I was sort of there watching the game thinking, yeah, he's had a decent half, you know, Fulham playing well. This is great. Opened up my Twitter at halftime and, and he's getting absolutely slated. I remember and that. And I'm sort of thinking... What, what's happened here? What am I seeing differently? And 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 uh, sort of discussing with with people yeah. offline. The view was actually we didn't see him off the camera. So some of the things that you were seeing, where he was going to close down runs, or if he was running into space, um, we didn't see any of that. So 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 that, that's that's one thing. Um, I suppose also information. You're always interested in, in picking up snippets, whether it's a sort of ball boy deciding to, to fall over a hoarding or an, an amusing anecdote about a fan or, or, or odd bits of trivia and odd bits of stat while things are happening. I mean, did you know Anthony Robinson was almost signed by AC Milan? I, I did not. That was uh, <laughs> I, I, I've never heard that fact before. So Twitter, Twitter, thank you. But um yeah, it, it sort of just acts as a barometer, um, yeah. your thoughts, and, and sometimes can broaden your thinking or also just cement your view that certain situations are a bit pants. Okay. Over to you, Claire. Your thoughts. Why do you go on social media? You and I talked about this, so please feel free to share your view of why you would go on during a match. Um, I I think Owen has said it so beautifully and the the um, use of the word barometer is so brilliant. I love that um, because it is, you know, that, and exactly what you've just said, I won't, I won't repeat because it, I won't say too much because it will repeat what you've practically said, Owen, but it is to validate my own thoughts. That's exactly what it is. And, you know, I'll get a WhatsApp from my dad and he'll go, we we did this or so-and-so did that or we should have done that. And um, and I'm like, really? Oh, am I watching the same game as you, Dad? <laughs> and then I know not to argue with my dad about Fulham because, you know, you just don't. He's my dad. He's been going for 328 years or whatever it is. Don't argue with me, Dad, about Fulham. So, you know, I usually end the WhatsApp conversation, but then I think, no, hang on, he's wrong, I'm right. So I'll go on Twitter, exactly like you said, and I'll be like, no, see, loads of people are saying that. <laughs> and it is exactly that. It's to validate. And also, um, it, it, it's it's to, to, like you said as well, Owen, it's, it's to maybe see something that you haven't seen. Someone might have picked up on that you might not have seen you know someone might say oh it looks like so-and-so is carrying a bit of an injury yeah it's a good point hamstring or something so then you know you'll focus on that a bit and you'll be like 
oh yeah, Reed, Reed has got a bit of a hamstring or something like that. So it can, you know, it can be really informative. The other, the downside of it is that it can, and I've used this word before tonight, it can be quite deflating, you know, when you're constantly reading the negativity, people's views, fair enough, everyone's got their own views and I completely respect those views from anybody. But when it's really negative, turning into abuse that's what I don't like you know someone saying oh Mitro was too slow fair enough but it's when Mitro was too slow the daft prick and all of this why do we need to be insulting as well that's the side that I don't like of it and that's the side I just feel is you know really kind of gets me down okay and Claire I want to go back to you because uh I want you to share what has happened with you on Twitter. And then maybe I, I think that would be a good place for us to go now, because uh, at one point you actually deleted your Twitter account. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I, um, I had my Twitter account probably for about five or so years. And um, it, it's, it's, it was, and I'm really sad that I've lost the, the name because it was lovely. It was at lemon rainbows. And it yes. Was just- beautiful twitter name anyway um i actually chose to take my twitter down because i found it just so negative I, and it was bringing me down people and i was following a lot of people that i thought i don't relate to you and in actual fact it would have taken me so much longer to actually whittle down the people that i would want to follow than if I just you know took it down altogether but there was a lot of negativity and what I found is because I am a people's champion so despite Fulham playing horrendously despite what people think about Tony Khan um you know and again I respect people's views if they don't think Tony Khan is doing a great job at Fulham if they think he focuses too much on his wrestling or other business interests that's that's fair enough. That's people's That's opinion. fair game. What I don't like is the abuse and the bullying. And I'm using that word not lightly because it is bullying. Um, and it's been relentless for many years. And I didn't like that. And what I didn't like was seeing that stuff on my timeline. And then with that, I felt that I was almost associated with it. And I didn't want to be associated with it. I was also, because I was sticking up for Tony Khan and, you know, other matters that I just thought were quite vile from some people, some of the tweets, I was getting quite a lot of abuse in my own private message box. You know, people, I I won't go into it. Um, You know, I won't say some of the things that I had in my message box, but some really awful 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 things horrible things you know probably being called every name under the sun um really really unpleasant and you know I don't I'm not scared of people people don't fear me um I I, sorry people don't fear me I don't fear people I'm sure people don't fear me either (laughs) um but you know there was one one person in particular um a male um who who was really vile to me and I just said you know not not to have a fight because you know I'm four foot nine I couldn't fight a flea um I I just said to him look if you really feel this strongly about my opinions please come and see me I'm h6 row n gave him my seat number and I said I'd love to have a chat with you come and see me of course he never came he'd never come and see me because it's all on the the computer isn't it it's all hiding find a laptop but it's unpleasant it's unkind and it's unnecessary and it upset me that much that I actually just deleted my Twitter because I felt that guilty by association because I was on Twitter I was following these people they were following me so I just I wiped it I've I've got about 10 followers now and that that makes me happy because they're people that I want to follow me and they're people that I want to interact with Okay, well, just so you know, I, I, I put in a scroll earlier your new Twitter account, so hopefully you'll find people that you will be happy to follow and they'll be happy to follow you. Rob, I want to go over to you, and again, we're talking about social media. I, I know you said that you don't really look at Fulham during matches, but I actually had a very interesting uh, 
message or uh, for you. And uh, and again, a question for you. This is for my friend Chris, and this is specifically for you, Rob, because we're talking about social media. Question for Rob: If you were playing now, would you have a social media account as fans abuse players? Um, I would do because I wouldn't. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't make. I wouldn't let people stop me doing what I wanted to do. And it's up to me who I follow or unfollow. Um, lots of players do have it for, for, for right or wrong reasons, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, it's, it, you know, that the lads are in the spotlight as I alluded to earlier on 24 seven. So there's not a lot of players on there, but there's enough on there that want to be on there, you know? So it's, it's, it's it's each to their own, really. Um, as we say, we've highlighted Danny Rose and, and, and yes. some of the Premiership players and Manchester United players and Aston Villa players the other week who get lambasted after a defeat or if they give a ball away and a goal ends up. Um, you know, you're going to expect hours and hours of abuse, not, wrongly so, uh, if you've got a Twitter account, you know, and it's it's down to you to, to how you handle that, you know, whether that motivates you or... Geez, you up to think, well, I'm going to prove you wrong, or you you swallow it and you know you just you hide under it. But um, I think this day and age, the players are slightly different, you know, and they do get a lot of education from within the club how to handle themselves in social media, so they can't hide behind that excuse. The PFA and all the all the all the Premiership and Championship and all the football clubs will will have media experts within their business to to teach them. The youngsters at scholars, they, they they have to go through courses. So, you know, if it gets out of hand, whether it's the players' fault or reacting to to abuse, then you know they shouldn't react, or they've got to be bigger and braver than that. And I know it's sometimes hard to to do that, uh, but I personally don't go on Twitter for for ninety minutes during a game purely because, you know, I'm I'm concentrating on the game. I like like some of you have alluded to saying that you want to see other people's views, if that's the yeah. same view. Like I said earlier on, I, I'll have a bit of WhatsApp banter with my son and, uh, and and Ian during a game, and we're all saying the same things, you know, Scott needs to do this, or, yep. you know, he's having a nightmare, or, you know, and, and it'll just be banter between us. And I do go on after the games and, and see, and um, I never react, I never get, you know, being an ex-player and a so-called Fulham, Fulham boy, a bit of a legend. I don't get involved in any spats with supporters, rightly or wrongly. You know, I do, I do, do quote sometimes, and uh, you know, I'm I'm on a Fulham supporters group uh, on a WhatsApp WhatsApp group, and there's about fifty fans on there, and and they've been watching Fulham a lot of them, you know, a long, long time. So I do see the WhatsApp messages and the and the abuse that that flies through social media, not social media, it's a WhatsApp platform between friends, really. Um, yeah. But sometimes I do want to react to some of them and I have to sort of hold myself back sometimes and think, well, and then I've put the odd one in there, but most of them it's friendly banter because I do see them at away games. But, yeah, it's um, it's each to the own. And, and as I say, it's um, it's a very difficult area to, to manage and, and that's where it all results in, in mental F. And, and I think, yeah. unfortunately, I think we're going to get more and more players coming out over the next six, 12 months that have had mental health issues over this last 12 months. You know, I think it's a, it's, yeah. it's, it's hiding underneath a stone and I think it's going to explode in the next 12 months. Okay. Very good. Oh, and I want to go to, go to you. I want to get your thoughts on what Rob and also what Claire shared. And, uh, you know, and I, I want to share this and I haven't really mentioned this enough. Uh, Owen does a fantastic podcast called the Fofcast with, with uh, Jerry Pym and uh, Scott Tanfield and, and uh, Mike has been on it. Steve has been on it. Who have been on cottage talk. You guys do a great job. And, you know, again, um, what's interesting, what you guys do is that, um, you know, and I like your style, you know, and, and again, it's uh, it works really well. It's different than, than cottage talk, but you guys are pretty balanced. You know, you, you have your negative commentary, but you have your positive commentary. But I'm curious your thoughts on what we're talking about with the social media part of this and how you deal with it as a fan. Yeah, and no, thanks, thanks, thanks. That's, that's really kind. And, and likewise, we, we all we all enjoy tuning into Cottage Talk as well. So I, th- I think really as as a fan, it, it it's tough to sometimes reconcile things that happen during a game and after a game. Um, I think I think a lot of the stuff, uh, just Rob's comments are the freshest in my mind. I, 
I think I think footballers are going to struggle with mental health in the next year. Um, yeah, as Rob's, I think I think Rob's you know, right. Yeah, players players, um, you know, they they've worked their whole lives to play football matches in front of fans um, and succeed uh, and, and sort of make people people happy as a side effect. But and, and I guess it it, it is a mo- it is a very sterile environment and. I don't know if any if anyone has trained for for marathons or trained for um, sort of other sporting events. It's soul destroying at times, but it's worth it for the big event. And when the big event is exactly the same as the training, it, it's 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 really deflating. And that, that was just just sort of my take my take on, on that particular issue. Um, and I think social media can be quite a cruel place. Um, yeah, is where I go and and. And I think, as I think Claire's point about, it's fair to criticise. It's fair to say someone is slow. It's fair to say someone is Mr. Sharp should do better. Yes, but also that's it's all fair game. Really important to remember that these are people at the end of the day. Yes, uh, and uh, you know, try try and put yourself in their position should should it come come back. And I, you know, I suppose the the one who who is often my blind spot sometimes I'm quite critical of Scott Parker. Um, but always try and remember that he's learning his craft. He he, he has time to grow, and and ultimately, sort of, uh, I, I personally think will become a very good manager. But you know, some of the vitriol, some of the abuse towards players is 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 really quite disgusting. You know, and and you know, particularly Cavallero. Um, I think he he gets it a lot. Um, I don't think my personal view is I don't think he's asking anyone to play him as centre forward. <laughs> I don't think he's ever grown up wanting to be a centre forward. And then and actually, to be fair, I have a lot of sympathy for him. Um, but I think you know the one thing that we we are as Fulham fans is we're all we're all sort of uh, sort of pushing in the same direction and we want Fulham to be successful. Exactly. Win together, we lose together. Um, and at the end of the day, I guess, you know, that it, it's a really tough environment right now. And, and all I'd say is that uh, if something's getting you down, sort of reach out to someone uh, on the platform or any platform. Um, because at the end of the day, for all of the, the negative connotations of social media, there are a lot of positive ones, too. Absolutely. Oh, and, and that's a great place for us to go now, because I'm glad that you said that for the negativity that we're talking about and focusing on. There's so much positive. I, I've made so many friends because of social media platforms. And I've, you know, again, I've enjoyed Fulham because of the social media platforms, Twitter, or Facebook. So, yes, there is that other side, that negative side, but there is a positive side because, like you said, we're all Fulham supporters wherever we are, you know, how, however old we are, you know, male, female, doesn't matter. We're all Fulham supporters. And we all want the same thing and we're all in it together. And I think that's kind of where I always go with it. But, but I do want to mention because, it, and again, I'm all for criticism on Twitter of players of Tony Khan of all of that. It's fair game. It's fair game. It really is fair game. And uh, my only thing when, when you do take it to say another level, you know, just, just think about that. But, but when it's on their performance, yeah, it, it's all fair game. You know, it absolutely fair game, and uh, you know, I think I think that's something that we need to clarify. You know, um, but you know, we're Fulham supporters, so we, you know, we get you know we get disappointed and we uh, we uh, we react, and I think that's also part of talking about our own mental health. We're, we're reacting to bad performances. You know, it affects our mood. That's why we have this conversation to begin with. All right, guys, listen, this has been for me an excellent show just to really just talk about different issues in the phone community. And before we go, I just want to go to each one of you and just get your thoughts on the show in general. Claire, I'll start with you just um, before we wrap up. What did you get out of this? Um, well, I think, you know, oh, you said it earlier, we're all sort of stuck at home. Um, it's an isolating experience at the moment. So just to be able to, you know, have a chat with different places, is lovely for a start and actually just to um make people aware that we've all got stuff going on in our heads all of us and owen you said it you know there is a lot of places to reach out there's yeah exactly lots and lots of charities and helplines a quick google you will find those um or you know it's twitter i have been quite negative about 
social media because my my experiences lately have been a bit neg- uh, you know le- lately have been a bit negative but you know you're completely right in that if i know this if i was now to go on twitter and say I really need someone to have a little chat with. I probably have about 100 comments in my inbox in 10 seconds because you get 99 lovely people to the one horror, really. Um, but, you know, that one horror probably has their own stuff going on in their lives that they're yeah. you know, defining things on. Um, so it's just really nice to touch on the fact that we're all human and we're all in the same boat. And, you know, right. it's not about being full and fans. We're all humans. We all do. We, you, you know, we all need to eat and drink and feel, feel things, and that, you know, we're all in it together. And that, that's okay. the nice thing that's come of this is, is the fact that we're talking about things that should be normal to talk about. Yeah, I totally agree. Over to you, Owen. What, what did you get out of this show tonight? I think the the, the main thing is that uh, I'm not the only one who, who 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 physically gets exasperated at times when when Fulham Fulham don't do what you'd like them to do. But uh, in all seriousness, I think I think it really sort of actually sort of underpins a message that at the end of the day, you know, if, if we're in a work environment and something is bad for your health, or you're in a personal situation that's bad yep. for your health, you owe it to yourself to do something to change it. And I think yep. uh, to some extent the same applies to Fulham. So. Um, Taylor, Taylor, how you uh, you live Fulham in, in a way that's probably healthier for you. If the things are, if it's really getting you down, you know, try turning off Twitter for a few days. I know I yeah. have um, mm. from time to time, uh, and 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 it's okay to say uh, I'm not okay, and uh, people are there. I'm glad that you said it that way, and I'm going to be actually sharing a link to um, to a group that um, Claire shared with me. I'm going to be put in the comment section. Highly recommend everyone checking that out. Rob, what did you get out of this tonight before we go? Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, um, it's nice to talk to a couple of new faces. I've obviously had correspondence with Claire before, but nice to to, to, to meet and speak to Owen. And always glad to speak to yourself, Russ, and discuss our, our personal experiences across the across the various platforms and yeah. in life in general. Um, I'm actually, uh, it's actually a Fulham fan, Lisa Loops, who's a, 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 she's directing a film that's it's about mental health. Um, that we're just waiting for funding on it. It's called Despondency. So she's she's asked me and Gordon Davis, and and I've managed to get Mark Crossley, Dean Widnas, uh, wow. John Parkin, Chris Kirkland. We're all going to be appearing in a, an episode of this. Oh, that's uh, wonderful! This, 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 it's going to be on Amazon Prime at the moment. Well, I think she just sent me a message to say we're going to start filming in June. <laughs> so that's going to there's going to be a scene about mental health and uh, oh, that's six, great. Six ex professional footballers. I think I don't know what it's going to be like. Well, all I know is that it'll um, a little bit. There'll be a bit of banter. There'll be a bit of serious side yep. to it as well. Um, but yeah, that's a, an ex. Uh, that's a Fulham fan now that's uh, involved in that. And so you know, that's opened my eyes for mental health generally because I've been in sort of correspondence with Lisa and obviously I watch I watch the guys daily on Twitter doing their walkings brilliant and and. Uh, lots of charity work that they do, and it's all related to to mental health and keeping yourself and keeping your mind, body, and soul active. You know, I think that's a clear message. You know that we sh- we should all wake up every morning and do daily. Okay, excellent. Listen, this has been a great show. I know I've gotten a great deal out of it, and I want to really just thank Owen, Claire, and Rob, all of you for joining me. And uh, I want to mention this one more time. Scott Tanfield from Friends of Fulham from the Fofcast. He was planning on joining us, but he, again, was not feeling well. And, I, and uh, it's too bad because um, I really wanted Scott to join us. Scott is someone that I respect beyond belief. He's actually been a good friend, and uh, you know, and I know he wanted to join us tonight. And, um, Scott, if you're watching or listening, just uh, you know, just know I'm, I'm thinking about you, and, uh, and uh, I'm just, you know, what you've done at Friends of Fulham and with the Fofcast has been amazing. And you've actually helped me a great deal with my Fulham experience. I also want to mention the Friends of Fulham because without Friends of Fulham, I don't know how much my experience with Fulham would have grown. I think that I think that's a big part of it, you know. And, and again, the, the message board. So that's also part of it as well. So Friends of Fulham has been a huge part of me being a Fulham supporter. So I want to mention that as well. Okay, great show, guys, and really just want to thank you all and. and Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening to our episode. I hope you got something out of it. We, we hope that this has been a constructive episode for you, but we do need to wrap this up. For Rob Wilson, 
Owen Smith and Claire Parrish. I'm Russ Goldman. Thank you as always for watching and listening to Cottage Talk.